Three, two, one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, let's just start. Yep, go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Gentleman's Debate podcast. It's episode 38. We're almost in our 40s. And with that comes, well, misery. But wisdom. Wisdom of learning how to... What the hell is wrong with your face? <laughs> we're in our 40s, man. No, we're in a thir- we're late 30s. Oh, yeah. Late 30s. Late 30s. 30 Still yet. practically dead. All right, mate. I think the, uh, the audience want to be cheered up. They want some, some happiness. You know, feel better about themselves. Why are they listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> Self-burn. Self-burn on the Gentleman's Debate podcast. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got another rip-roaring topic to be debating. And that is, who's the greatest or best British comedian? Of all time. Now, obviously, we can't go back in time to like the 1500s when there was like jesters rolling around with kings because there's no recorded information about them. Oh, shit, that's my choice out. Damn! But, obviously, we can go through the entire plethora of amazing comedians in the British comedy scene. Um, we could have actually specified it and been like, still working today. We could have done that, but you know what? There's some retired ones, that I would say. That are yeah. The, obviously, are the greatest. Um, also, we'll be revealing the details of our last episode's polls to see who won against Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader on who is the greatest Star Wars character. I was going to say greatest showman there. Greatest showman. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm allergic to the greatest showman, Josh. You know this. I'm allergic to musicals. If I'm honest, I did really enjoy The Great Showman. Yeah, Get out. Look, Get I, out. I really did enjoy Get it. Out. Well, I will say, Hugh Jackman, he is a multi-talented, <clears throat> beautiful bastard. I well, you know, his original trainer was in musicals. So. I know, yeah. yeah. So he's, a, he's a Royal Shakespearean actor. That motherfucker. That might be a gangster. I enjoyed it to the point that I was in my mate's car the other week and it was blaring out. Really? And we yeah. were singing along. Was he, was, he, Larry. was he sucking you off as well? <laughs> was that... I mean, I like it, but I don't have the theme, like, album blaring in my car, if I'm honest. My girlfriend, she used to have it on uh, repeat on her Spotify playlist, and now she has um, the Beach Boys, Good Vibrations. Not from Simon. Oh, you had to go and ruin it, didn't you? You you had to go and hurt my feelings. uh, So so your rabbits aren't actually rabbits. (laughs) (laughs) For anyone who doesn't know, I have pet rabbits. <coughs> well. Well, they might not be my pet rabbits. We're getting those good vibrations. Do, 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 do. And I can hear that coming from the, the spare bedroom. Door is closed for some reason, though. <coughs> Weird burring sound, like a... <laughs> <laughs> She's having sex with Brian Badonde. Poor. <laughs> <laughs> but <Brilliant>. uh, <laughs> You and your impressions, kid. Is that just what you do? <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I do in the act exactly of love making. You make love. Uh, yep. Mm. <clears throat> yep. Delicious. It's true. I've seen the videos. Well, we uh, starred in one of them. Yeah, you, 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 uh, you, you try to bill us too much for that. Mm. Um, we weren't happy with your uh, with your bill. No. So therefore, we refused it, and we had a lawsuit. Um, and we won, but uh, unfortunately, you know that one of the one of the parts of it is we had to give you Josh. So, um, <laughs> well, Josh was more than willing. Yep. Um, and whilst we're talking about Josh, we might as well I get the plug know. out of the way <laughs> 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 of uh, YorkVideoPro.co.uk. Got it right uh, this time. I know. It took me. I mean, to be honest, I'm. That was a lucky shot. <clears throat> um, but it's, it's not. It's your video productions, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. Is it? <laughs> It's not. It's well, not. Vi- York Video Pro. Right. Thank okay. you very much. Right. But on Facebook, it is Josh. I just really wanted him to fuck York up. Video then. production. And on Twitter, it is York Video Pro. And on Instagram, York Video Pro. And on Pornhub, <laughs> <laughs> one-handed bandit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Josh um, and Kathy's dinner fun. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fetch your damn sprouts. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> She's not American. <laughs> I don't know. She's uh, from Sunderland. That's the worst impression yep. of that accent I've heard in my entire life. I'm not going to do a good Sunderland impression. I mean, I quite enjoyed it, if I'm honest. Yeah. When I was in Sunderland What, the Sprouts? <laughs> be like a... Be like trying to pull... Would you stop? <laughs> you were in Sunderland last weekend. That was. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah. You just got a beach yeah. near it, you know? It must be full of nuclear radiation. Like, they, I, I presume that nuclear power plants and other chemical places must just dump shit on that beach and just go, it's not going to make a difference, is it? Fuck it. We've already got web toes and web feet. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, learned. I can't feel feelings anymore, so... I can't feel feelings. Yeah. Interesting. But, ladies and gentlemen, the plug that we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Nothing to do with Brussels sprouts. Only on the weekend. Um, Josh is our producer. Um, So, the way that the podcast is all done is that Josh works behind the camera, makes sure everything runs smoothly, edits our podcast beautifully to make sure we look as seductive as that cunt does. (laughs) Seductive. Seductive inverted <coughs> commas. So, if you like Josh's work, then please go to his website, yorkvideopro.co.uk, and hit him up and ask him to do work on you with Brussels sprouts. And the discount code is Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Happy with the plug? It was all right, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> just <laughs> get people that. expecting a uh, discount code. You just got <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got this discount code, mate. Brussels sprouts? 50, 50 emails to you just saying... Yeah, I'd really like some work done. Uh, Brussels sprouts? <laughs> yeah, but I'll be... The police start going, right, this guy's definitely dealing drugs. This guy's <laughs> definitely dealing drugs. I mean, that's double my day rate for a start. What, Brussels sprouts? Brussels oh, sprouts. day rate. Day rate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enunciated that very well there. Oh... I mean, that comes after further neg- negotiation. <laughs> well, there's no negotiation involved with that, is there? I thought that was uh, the point. <laughs> uh, fun. Good anyway. Old <laughs> Good old innuendos and jest and stuff. So, Sam. Greatest Star Wars character of all time. Do you want to get... I oh, know, I'll do the Twitter you, one Yeah, first. you go with Twitter first. And then you can do Facebook. Now... For anyone who hasn't watched that episode, we implore you to go back and watch episode uh, 37. Go back and watch that and see what you thought. See if your opinions match up with how the polls ran. Um, but I picked Obi-Wan Kenobi, the uh, the greatest uh, knight of the Jedi Order. And uh, Sam picked Darth Vader, arguably the greatest Sith Lord in, in that sort of generation. Yeah, the chosen one. AKA the chosen one. On Twitter, the poll ran as this Darth Vader, zero. Obi Wan Kenobi, 100%. Twitter, you, but there's some big fans on for uh, Obi Wan Kenobi out there. That's what I'll say. Um, <clears throat> that was that consisted of seven votes. So that was seven people, including myself, that voted for Obi Wan Kenobi. You didn't even vote on Twitter. You didn't vote for yourself. Did I not? No, you didn't. Well, obviously not. I'm pretty sure the poll's still open. (laughs) And here we go. (laughs) Josh, you get on there and fucking vote for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Just gonna... Tigger Get onto the old... Oh, that doesn't bring anything up. I mean, you never asked me who I would vote for out of those two. Who would you vote for? Jar Jar Binks. Out of those two? You're not gonna like it. Just get on with it. Darth Vader. I still think Obi Wan Kenobi's the best. Yeah, but there's not there's not a character more iconic than Darth Vader. It's true. Maybe there isn't. Han Solo, <clears throat> maybe. No. So that's one for Luke. Darth Vader. So it's now eighty eight percent to thirteen percent. 
Oh, right. And also, I'm just going to go on to this other Twitter account that I have called uh, Radioactive Screen. Oh, I see how and, this is. Um, radioactive Screen, for those who don't know, so is oh, really, a Sam? YouTube is video. What is Radioactive uh, Screen? <laughs> a YouTube video, a YouTube account that we have set up um, are dedicated to all things film and television. I'll go watch it now. You should go watch yeah. it now. So, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that's how you sign up for that <laughs> So just saying, if, fill if you want to uh, bring, I'm just going to bring back up the the, 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 the the poll for for last week, just to see where we're at. And uh, oh, no, it's still showing Darth Vader as zero percent, even though I've just voted on both. of them. This is a disgrace. What it's going to show is the force is strong with Obi Wan Kenobi. It's very true. So on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, Good we segue. have. Um, uh, <laughs> it just went onto the comments, and obviously there was just a pog. Well, should we? Should we talk? Should we give the shout out to the? Um, yeah, shout out comments? to uh, Sam Paris, whoever she may be. Who is that, uh, by the way? Um, I have no idea. Is some, she that? Some is she that weird one that tries um, stalking me? Yeah, all the no, time. No, she's got like one foot bigger than the other. Walks in a circle. That's Sam Paris, isn't it? Am I missing something here? No, 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 no. Who else? And um, <clears throat> Steve Calamity Carter, no oh, relation, yeah. but hi Steve, he's one of my mates. Um, and Big he... eyebrows, long fingernails, well, fishes, never, never fishes with his hands. Fully examinate, examinated, examinated. examinated. <laughs> I've never fully examinated his fingernails, um, but he put a gif of uh, it's it's going to annoy me. But basically, a Lego version of a famous movie character blowing uh, Jar Jar Binks' head clean off. Fuck you, Josh. Um, but uh, Darth Vader on the Facebook poll got 72%, and Obi-Wan got 28%, a total of 25 votes. Um, <clears throat> Somebody do the maths. Which means, got it, seven votes for Obi-Wan Kenobi. So add that seven, makes 14. it 14. Uh, 18 for Darth Vader, so you still lose. <laughs> Again. Uh, but I could then add those other two votes that have just gone on the Twitter poll. Just don't know who voted. And it's 20 votes, so you got butt fucked again. So, that wasn't uh, that bad compared to um, Charlie Cox versus Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, very, very true. But I just add there might be 21 very soon. Whey! But in all honesty, I think I said it last episode Obi Wan Kenobi is an amazing character. He is my favourite character. I just think the best character. Is Darth Vader, and that's the uh, the decision rendered by the public, as it's uh, apparently a democracy. We have to honour it. What we should do is get like a well, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. You're never getting that role in Star Wars, are you? No matter how hard you try. One day. One day. Directed by Rian Johnson. To be honest... I'd get fired straight away. Why are we doing this? Because. Reasons. Yeah, but why? Because. Reasons. No, but why are we doing this? Right, you're fired. They might get get you on just to, so they could like assert their dominance. You know, like how some directors will do that, where they'll like get an actor on and then just fire them on the first day just to show everyone that they're not to be fucked with. I mean, in all honesty, Sam, you just sell out and, you know, take the acting gig. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course I would. Uh, yeah, of course I would as well. Fuck that. Hmm. You're in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> what are the Set myself up for life. Greatest film franchise I'll have some time. weird sense of pride for no reason whatsoever. For, have a sense of pride for turning down Rian Johnson. I mean, if Rian Johnson just had his dick out and went, this is the way you're going to get the job, you're probably getting down on those knees. I have a Harvey Weinstein method. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not condoning it. All I'm saying is, it's a genuine method as an entire porn subgenre. <laughs> it's gen- genuine method. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said it a lot last week, but what the fuck happened to this podcast? <clears throat> also, what happened to Simon? What do you he mean? Was, you were Mr. What PC. I, yeah, what did yeah, happen to Yeah, and all of a you? sudden he's just Mr. like... Mr. PC. Nah, it's... Pulling out all the stops. Hashtag me too. Anyway... Shall we move on to... Where's that hand going? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want to earn it this way. Weinstein. 
Is, I feel sorry. Is that her name is autobiography. Where's that hand going? Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be his, would it? No, it would be the victims. Yeah. Where's that hand going? With Paltrow or something like that. Well, you know, um, allegedly, I don't know if she got yeah, touched. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, but here's one thing. You know, Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. Talk about, about kind of segueing over to the comedian genre. Yeah. Uh, Louis C.K. His thing apparently was getting people to watch him whilst he masturbated. Yeah. He's just, uh, just he, he wouldn't want he, to touch he, him. He, he, asked he just wanted to whack off in front of him. Yeah, he asked very politely if he could do it. They said, no, we're, we're not comfortable with that. And he was like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. It, yeah, he's not, he's not was, as that, bad as Harvey Weinstein, no, no. but he's still a bad person. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, on the scale of monsters, he's like a, just a weird guy. He's no Cosby or Savile, but... Yeah, exactly. That's well, true. Yeah, and you can say about Cosby <laughs> now because he has been convicted. Yeah. He's been convicted. He's going to. He might be going to prison for thirty years. Now he's like eighty nine. He's 80 gonna odd, die in there. Ninety years old. <laughs> Deserves it. Well, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to who we believe are the greatest British comedians. <laughs> Knock on wood. Hopefully, none of them turn out that they've done any of the shit like Harvey Weinstein or Louis C.K. Knock on wood. We're future-proofing ourselves. If they have done it, then they obviously lose their title as the greatest because they're then just pieces of shit. Um, so, Sam, who is your pick? Oh. And we'll, we'll get Josh's opinion this time in the podcast because he didn't do it last time. Yeah. Sorry. I'm torn between two, so I'm going to have to pick... <laughs> Yeah, Natalie Imbruglia is the greatest British comedian. <laughs> <laughs> did she do a? She did a gig with um, some comedian who does like. Um, oh, what's it called, man? It's like it's not where you, it, you, it's like mime com- comedy, and it's like to music, so it's in a, a, a comedic way. And then it's Natalie Imbruglia. Um, I'm like a bird or something like that. Is that is that the song she did? No, she was that another? Tom. Who's the, who's the woman who did I'm like a bird? Nelly Furtado. Okay, I got the wrong person, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we Googled this a few episodes yes, ago. Yes, we did. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was impressive then. I thought nobody would remember. And I'm just like, yeah, I know my music. I know. I remember I know. it all. <laughs> Damn it, it didn't work. Like a bird, it's an echo in here. <laughs> Greatest British, British comedian. I kind of went podcast then and then <laughs> realised I meant comedian. What is the greatest greatest uh, British podcast, guys? What's the greatest British ponster? I thought that's where you're going, if I'm honest. I like you pointing at yourself. Yeah. Just, you know. A little shade to admit it. Us. We us. are the greatest <laughs> British ponster the... of all time. <sighs> we... Did you have to reveal it live on the podcast? <laughs> well, they're going to see our material right. sooner or later. Well, you know, and if you, uh, if Probably you, later. what we'll do is we'll put a donations thing up when we start doing live streaming just about here. Um, <clears> and <throat> depending on how many donations we get, depends what we do. <clears throat> I did not agree to this. <laughs> babe, babe station. <laughs> Eat got that bowl of peanuts. <laughs> Would you, um, if the someone brought in a load of chocolate today to work, oh, yeah. all of it had nuts in. Was it what? She was like, would you like some? I was like, no, <laughs> I can't. She was like, oh, yes, I did. I did remember about that when I got to the checkout, but I thought, and I don't care. It. I was like, <laughs> and then thanks. Thought, and then thought, you know what, Sam, you're a cunt, so fuck you. It just dredged you with like peanut butter paste or something on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> no ideas, people. I mean, if there's a torture method for you, it's literally start applying peanut butter. To like parts of your body, just give us the information, Mister Carter, <laughs> or you will become inflamed. <laughs> Who the fuck is that's torturing a good, me? Hey, that's a. I think that's quite a good one. That's a good little. Uh, Who voice. are you trying to be? I'm quite happy. I wasn't trying to be anyone. I was trying to be just a weird bad guy who likes spreading peanut butter on people. <laughs> All right, he's the peanut butter man. <laughs> Captain Peanut Butter. How do you like these nuts? That's, that's his saying. That's his thing. And he straps you down to a table and then he rests his nuts on your forehead. <laughs> oh, 
God. I'm going to get so hard thinking about that tonight. Um, right, so the best British comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm torn between two, uh, between Frankie Boyle and Ricky Gervais. Ooh. I think I'm going to have to go for Frankie Boyle. Even though Ricky Gervais just had a smash uh, Netflix. Yeah, and that, that stand-up is one of my favourite stand-ups of all time. Really it was brilliant. That. But it has to be Frankie Ball for me. I mean, he's a legend. He is an absolute legend. But. Oh, we're bringing up Frankie Boyle with his beard. Look at that beard. I mean, he, he, he do, when he said, I look like a paedophile, or like the kind of guy that waits around parks to see if any kids are left behind... Yeah, I can. I get what you mean. The interesting bit about um, Frankie Boyle uh, is that he does a lot of the joke writing for Jimmy Carr. Powerful. Um, and they, I remember that when he there's all the controversy around the jokes that he told, which you might you might talk about later. Um, him and Jimmy Carr did an interview in like some London tech thing, and it was just a, an interview for Apple, I think it was. Um, and he was talking about how, I don't understand, like, he, he didn't understand for a long time how an angry Scottish man saying what he was saying was any different <clears throat> to, like, a posh British guy, like Jimmy Carr. And then he realised, oh, wait, it's because people think I'm actually having a go at them. Mm-hmm. People think I'm actually, like, making fun of them or something. On the stream right now, uh, Frankie Bell's face is on your body. Is it? It's great. Yep. <laughs> cool. I like it. Yeah. I do sort of. I mean, if I, d- if I had hair. Yeah. If, if I had, had hair, hair. If I had hair and glasses. If. You would look nothing like Frankie Boyle. Yeah. I'd also have to have a ginger beard, I just realised. What is up with people who've got ginger beards but dark hair? I'll also say you'd have to be able to grow that much hair. <laughs> the beard I could do. The beard I can grow quite a lot of beard yeah. hair quite quickly. Um. Obviously, the hair one, I'd have to just hold my nose and ears and blow really hard to get the Play-Doh to come out. Oh, well, there is that cure for baldness, apparently. Yeah, yeah, saw that. Um, I like how it's a cure, even though it's not a disease. Well. It's just genetics. It's, <coughs> it's kind I mean, of... I think I come in with a crucifix every time I come to record. <sighs> wow. <laughs> wow. Explains a lot. That explains the tingling, anyway. Um, <laughs> but for me, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest British comedian of all time, and you probably can guess where I'm going to go with this, is Mr. Lee Evans. Yeah. The legend. Do you like a bit of Lee Evans? Legend, and I mean absolute comedy legend, Lee Evans, who has sold out the Wembley Arena on one, on his tour, renowned for his... Monkey boy! Renowned for his amazing physical humour... Also, his brilliant observational humour. And also, just as an all-round performer, for example, when he did the um, the piss take of Bohemian Rhapsody. Lee Evans, for me, is one of the greatest British comedians, arguably, and I would say arguably, <laughs> the greatest comedian of all time. I think the only person, the only people who are up with him are people like Richard Pryor, and um well, not British. Uh, huh? Not English. Yeah, I'm saying no. as all, of all time no, outside no. like in the world, yeah. I'd say Richard Pryor and <coughs> oh, I've forgotten his name. He did the um one of the sitcoms. Oh, I've, I've lost it. Well, like Monty Python or No, 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 no. So I don't I don't actually think that they're up. I think the only person who's actually towards the same level as Lee Evans with somebody like Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson, brilliant. yeah, but the thing is, Rowan Atkinson's stand-up career isn't as good as Lee Evans' stand-up career. No. Whilst I'd say Rowan Atkinson's acting career is better than oh, Lee yeah. Evans' acting career. Yeah. But as, when we just talk about comedians, the furnace that makes a comedian is stand-up comedy. You can have people who are funny in, like, acting, but they're usually not a specialist. They're not just, like, a, comed- a, a comedy actor. They usually want to try and branch and do like drama and thrillers and action and stuff like that. I think this is the first time as well that we've actually made two choices that are not very similar to each other. How do you mean, sorry? Like in previous debates, like when we've picked our own answers, they have been 
within the same sort of region, haven't they? So, for example, Queen and Sabbath, fairly, fairly similar bands to a certain extent. Vader, Obi Wan. Oh, I, you know I, mean? I fucked up on that one because I went for a heavy metal band rather mm. than an actual rock band. <clears throat> if but, I went for the Beatles or the Sex, not Sex Pistols, but this is the one Rolling where Stones. you wouldn't you wouldn't say like so for they're co- not comedy styles. Yeah. They're not considered together. Frankie Boyle and Lee Evans are totally yeah, complete, separate ways. Completely different kind of comedy. Mm. The thing is that so this is going to be an interesting one actually. We, so we'd love to play you videos of the. You know, the, of our two choices, our two champions of British comedy. Uh, but there's two reasons why we can't. One, if we start playing YouTube videos, the people who own those YouTube videos uh, will, will be like, you're taking money away from us, which is totally fine. Send the SWAT teams around. Yep. And, and also, two, then we're also playing the material of the comedians, which is their, their com- you know, it's their material. They've earned their money, they, or they earn their money from them in historic manners. Kind of like how uh, radio, we're not allowed to play like music. Yeah. Um, but we're allowed to say their jokes. So if you can think of any of their jokes, any of their bits, any of their skits, etc., that's fine. That's the rules now that we live in. Unfortunately, we can't just show you uh, in, like 20 seconds of Frankie Boyle heck, like having a go at somebody in the front row. I can't, we can't show you the whole monkey boy sketch from Lee Evans one. Unfortunately, we can't do that. What you, what you can do whilst doing this podcast is Google those for yourselves. Cool. Those are the rules. So, Sam, explain to the ladies and gentlemen, and me, and Josh, why you think Frankie Boyle is the best. And then, Josh, whilst we're doing this, if you want to have a think of your own favourite comedian outside of the two of ours. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be better if you gave us, like, a another outlier. The wild card. We'll call it the wild card. Yeah, I thought I'm mine, I think. Okay, cool. I think. 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 Do you like a few more seconds? I mean, you guys do your debate. <clears throat> then ask me. Sam, give cool. me some f- hot Frankie Boyle action on my so, face. So, Frankie Boyle, there are many, many reasons why he is as high up the comedy rankings as he is nowadays. And I think the, probably <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the biggest reason for it is just his pure fearlessness when it comes to telling jokes. I mean, he is just not afraid to say absolutely anything distracting. All right, Josh. Just get on with your debate. <laughs> You're searching for your favourite comedian. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> keep, well, let's keep going. Yeah, so he's just not, he's not afraid to say, you know, whatever jokes come into his head. He'll just be like, as long as it, you know, works uh, and can make an audience see that there's reasoning behind the joke, he will say it, no matter what it is. Um, And he's fully reiterated that, like you were touching on before, about how um, people weren't really getting the fact that they are jokes. That's that's the point of his stand-up. It's not that he believes anything that he's saying. It's that they are jokes. So there was obviously the controversy between him and Katie Price. Or did you see... Sorry, just to jump in there. Did you see Katie Price try to run the London Marathon in that outf- in a stupid outfit? Could you just Google that for us, Josh? Katie Price, London Marathon outfit. <clears throat> um, she tried to run it with a stupid outfit on. Um, mm. Are you sharing that for it so people at home can see? I will be. Thank you And then just go to images. Crashes out. I know how it works, Simon. Just. Jesus. Oh, where's her outfit? No, 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 no. It's, it's not this. It's not this. It's not this. Just put 2018. Because that's with Peter Andre, which I, I don't think she probably wants those to be expunged from time. There we go. The pink one. The, with, the, with the wings. So she tried yeah. to finish the London Marathon in what looks like to me. I mean, with those wings. They do look like, like testicles. They look like veiny balls, to be honest. Yeah. Um, she tried to finish it. So what happened What happened midway through it, though, is she couldn't finish it after she'd only got to, I think, 20... She, she still had 20 miles remaining. And then a police officer from the London Met took over and then finished the race for her. <laughs> Katie Price. She is a dick. Well, I can, <laughs> no, kind, of, she is I can kind of understand it. I can kind of understand because the joke, I mean, I, for anyone who um, 
the, the Frankie Boyle joke that we're talking about is a uh, it's a, it's an absolute savage savage That's joke. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> um, and it wasn't the interesting bit was it wasn't on like mock the week or anything. It was his own show. Yeah, it was his, yeah, it was a stand up. His own show, which was called Tramadol Nights. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Which then yeah. he migrated into his actual stand up routine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, do you remember his Tramadol Nights? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking if it if it's on four OD now, go and have a search on four OD uh, on demand. And if Tramadol Nights is up there, watch it because it is. Some of it was a bit shit, and I will say that because he's, he's not a sketch. I don't think he's a very good sketch writer, but his jokes were fucking savage because Channel Four let him basically do what the yep. what he wanted. They gave him free reign, didn't they? Yeah, which was a bit of a. <clears throat> It was a risky move, but that's what you want from Frankie Boyle. You're not there for him. No, absolutely. To be tamed, you want, no. and you could see it on Mock the Week. He wasn't happy. Yeah, well, that's that's part of the reason why he left. Why and, he left? Yeah, Mock, and Mock also the, the controversy. They, they, they were they were basically trying to. Um, oh God, what's the restrict? Phrase? Yeah, restri- restrict what he could or couldn't say. He had to say shagging a lot. I remember that. Yeah, remember he had to say shagging, humping. He couldn't say like fucking. He couldn't swear at all on it. Mm. Um, and, it and it's <clears throat> another part of obviously my argument is something that was as brilliant as Mock the Week back in the day. It's still it's still enjoyable. They still have some very very good comedians on there. They have some very bad comedians on there. I'd agree. I um, totally but agree. It's I think it's completely unanimous with everybody that when Frankie Boyle left Mot the Week, it went down in a quality. Lot of, a oh, yeah. lot of quality. A lot, left. yeah. It, it dipped massively. And, then and it just at... goes to show just how good Frankie Boyle is. Because he can bring someone like, you know, with, with the back and forth that they had on the show, he could bring someone like Russell Howard up a few pegs. Because I, like, I don't mind Russell Howard. He's not the greatest comedian out there, in my opinion. Um, but on... On Mock the Week, I thought that's where he was at his best on his panel you shows. You needed a dark entity to bounce off of. Yeah, yeah. You did. And it, that kind of... That, yeah, they really worked well together, whereas... Uh, Andy just Parsons. The Boyle just, Do you remember Andy Parsons? Yeah, again, another one. Not the greatest comedians, but, but he, he worked I well saw, for what he did on that show. I saw Andy Parsons. Um, he did a stand-up set, like a, his hour or something like that. And he, I'm sorry, but him just doing stand-up, so he's not on a panel show, is fucking good. Like, it's surprisingly right, okay. good. I've, I've only ever See, seen bits and bobs of his actual stand-up. It's quite and it funny. Just, it didn't really... He takes, I suppose that's the thing about humour, isn't it? He's willing... Yeah. yeah, I think there's a bit where he starts. somebody starts heckling him, and he, he goes in on him. And I mean hard on him. And I will say, I really enjoyed that, because so, it was so much different compared to what he was on. Because on the show, he was kind of like the... Like, kind of... The, he portrayed the loutish kind of regular, regular... British person. Like the Al Murray kind Yeah, of. the working class. Like, that yeah. was his bit. Hugh Dennis <clears throat> was like the posh kid, like the posh guy who would be like, oh, yes, and would do all the impressions, even though he wasn't an impressionist. He was good at impressions, though. He's all, he was good at some, yeah. yeah but he wasn't He wasn't like Rory Bremner. No, when, God, no. They, when they had Rory Bremner on, fantastic. But then you had, um, was it James Oliver? Oh. He's got his own um, late night show in America John now. Oliver. John Oliver, uh, thank you. Oh yeah, jo- uh, who I I'm I not know a huge I, fan of John Oliver. I enjoy it, but I think he's not a, he's not a stand up. Yeah, he's he's, he's a, not a stand up. He's, he's, he's with his own them. show. He's a lot better. Yeah. But Frankie Boyle on Mock the Week was it's one of those a things of like fresh air. whenever Frankie Boyle's on anything, even when it's with other comedians, like you say, you could have the top comedians like they did back in, in the days of Mock the Week where they had, you know, people like your Dara O'Brien, who's a quality comedian. Um, when you had your Ed Byrne, another quality comedian, your Andy Parsons, they had Michael McIntyre on the show at that point. Michael McIntyre is not everybody's cup of tea. He's not my cup of I, tea. But I, I really enjoy uh, Michael McIntyre. But Frankie Ball just completely outshone them, outclassed them in every single way, especially in scenes we'd like to see, which is everyone's favourite part of Mock the Week, let's face it. But, um, you know, that, that and that's just how good he is as a comedian. Like, yeah. you can put him in a room with the top in the world and he will just absolutely wipe the floor with them. As long as he's got the time to write the jokes. Well, no. As well, no. long as he's got the time to write the jokes a lot. Like, because... And a lot of comedians have that where they have to 
They want to get because the scenes like C is not like a off the cuff. Oh no, it's not. No, but. you can tell that quite easily, especially because a lot of the jokes are recycled for other stuff. Yeah, but um, no, if you actually again, you watch some of uh, Frankie Boyle's stand up when he has to deal with like the hecklers and things like that. Oh, we didn't know. He, then, then he's fantastic. He goes he's to peer- town, so he doesn't need time to write the jokes. He he can do it like that. clicking eh? Mm. but the the whole thing with Frankie Boyle is his savagery yes absolute yeah savagery and the the good thing about his savagery as well is that it actually stems from a very 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 clever uh, and well articulated joke if you know what I mean so this it's not just a lot of people um, and this is a lot of things uh, a lot of the uh, criticism that Frankie Ball gets. They just say, a lot of people, and I've noticed a lot of people saying this to me and saying, oh, I don't like him because he just says horrible things for the sake of it. It's like, no, when you actually listen to the joke and look at the context in which he's telling the joke, it's actually extremely cleverly written. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the thing about Frankie Boyle. He's, he's, it's very, very subtle. He's, it, a like, lot of people think he's the, 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 the a context, The Scotsman. context, I mean, like, you know, you would think, oh, he's just saying this because it's horrible, but he's not. When you actually look at the background behind what he's saying, it's absolute. It's 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 nothing short of genius, in my opinion. One of my favourite ones I saw was when he was the guest uh, presenter for Nevermind the Buzz Cox. Yep, and he <laughs> funny story he went, about that. He, I, he said, he said. I don't know why they've let me on. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's the bit, that's where you know this is a special show. Yeah. A funny story about that, actually, because I, I, I watched that when it first actually aired on TV. Mm-hmm. And um, they did a segment on it where it was Muse. And he ripped the piss out of Matt Bellamy. Said he looked like a hedgehog on meth or something like that. <laughs> and at that point, because it, it was quite a few years ago now, I was, because... I, I, Still, I'm the, one of the biggest fans of Muse on the planet, and um, I, w- I went on all of the um, Muse forums and like fan pages and stuff afterwards to see how, if other people like really enjoyed it as much as I did. It had me howling with laughter, and a lot of the Muse fans were going, "I can't believe you said that. It's disgusting. Oh, we hate Frankie Ball." And I was like, "Well, no, no. you've, I bet you've Matt missed Bellamy the was, point." And you bet he was. I went pissing on. Himself. I went on that. I said, "I bet that would have had Matt Bellamy in absolute fucking stitches." Oh, well, you've got when you're getting addressed yeah. by one of the best British comedians <clears throat> at that time yeah. on one of the biggest panel shows at that time. Yep. And you're getting the mick taken out of you, and the mo- the worst he can come up with is he, you look like a hedgehog on meth. He's not criticising how good you are at music. He's just saying you, you got share. That's it. That's all he's really saying at the end of the day. Mm. I loved him on that. That 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 was yeah. That was a special episode for me. I yeah. really enjoyed that. I wish, I wish, you know where they did, well, who's the lad who did it for ages? Simon Amstel. I was never a fan I, of no, him. I, I, I was never a fan mm, of him, if I'm I honest. loved him on Nevermind the Buzzcocks. Again, I've wat- I watched, tried watching one of his stand-ups the other day. I think it was a new one on Netflix. <laughs> Plus me. you. Um, Plus and you. It, it wasn't to my taste. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, my cu- it's, it's not my cup of tea, another personally. one where I think you should, panel shows is great at, Yeah, but, you should definitely stick yeah. to panel shows, not any form of stand-up. But bless you, Jesus Christ! Oh no, the hay fever begins. Dun 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 dun. Oh, so whilst is that you the crystal maze, no. So whilst you whilst you get crystal maze or crystal meth. Both oh. crystal meth in the crystal maze. Oh. Magic. What was going on? <laughs> <laughs> You'd lose your shit. Now, while you get all... Uh, <laughs> whilst you get... We're just going to have an hour and a half of this, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So I'm sure the ladies and gentlemen will enjoy this. Simon tries to speak. <laughs> now, stop it, please. Don't do it now. Okay. Don't do not do it. Yeah. <laughs> Won't. Don't do it. It's, the joke's over now. Come on, let's face it. Let's, I can see him doing I'm it. I'm going to take yeah. the high ground here. Sam, don't do it. Yes, with that wink. <laughs> Come on, you missed my Obi Wan joke there. Yeah, I got, I got it. Thank you. I chose to ignore it. Oh, to be a little shit. So now that Sam has been infected with hay fever, his nose begins to run, his eyes begin to water, 
When it begin, begins to become a sweaty mess, I'll talk about the other sweaty mess. The best sweaty mess. <laughs> right, I finished the theme tune now. How am I supposed to work with these kind of tools? <laughs> <laughs> mm. You've also got to sing the outro, so... I just... What? What? Ah, oh, fuck. What? <laughs> right. Sweaty. Mess. Yes. Lee Evans. Yes. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. You ruined my segue that I planned there just because you started sneezing. Little ball bag. I want you to superimpose a ball bag onto him when you're doing the editing, Josh. All right. <laughs> Get Katie Price's yes. costume Make me and Thanos. superimpose uh, on his fucking face. I just want to say on the back of that, out. I know she was doing that for charity for lung cancer, which is actually a commendable thing. Yes. But she's still a dick. <laughs> In every way. She's I feel sorry for a you know poisonous I feel sorry for? human being. Peter Andre. I don't. I feel a bit sorry no, for I him because his kids... Because he's got well, kids with his her. kids that he parades around for the media as well. I mean, yeah, he does... I mean... I well, don't feel it? sorry for either of them. They're what? both... Cunts. And if you are Peter Andre Hockey or Katie Price, we'd love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> so I like how we're now going to get a lawsuit because they will pursue that lawsuit. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, Katie Price doesn't like people saying anything bad about her, does she? No. Pub- like publicly or something or other yeah. like that. Well, Another not- reason why she is a massive cunt. So I'd like I- to distance myself away from uh, Sam's comments here, Katie. When I cut this down into a short video... And put, no. it, put it on Facebook. No, 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 no. Are we tagging these guys in it? <laughs> no, no, no. Do you think Katie Price has her own like YouTube channel? I'd be surprised. She should have her own. Like I know this sounds stupid, but she should have her own like channel where she reads the books that she's obviously written. I mean, she, <laughs> she obviously wrote. She them. can't read. Oh, no, come on, <laughs> come on. Right, she obviously well, wrote them. It has her name on him. Come on, obviously. Well, Will Smith started vlogging. Yeah, Is like she cool? could. She could easily do it. Woke up this morning. Didn't have much to do. Started reading my book, The Camera. That's day one. Day two, say it again. <laughs> Rinse, repeat. Day Till the three, book's done. Woke up. Tit's still 20 years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's almost true though. Like she's had a lot, I know, I know she... She's had a lot of plastic <coughs> surgery done. Like a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to be invited back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Katie Price invites you around to her house all the time. It's like, Sam, come over. It'll be all right. It'll be nice. I'm not trying to do her voice, by the way. I just randomly did a voice. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do her voice. Oh, because she's from Ithix. Is she? She's actually from Essex? Yeah. Oh, I didn't Have know you that. never heard her speak? No. Try to block that out. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, she sounds brain dead. So and then she went out with Peter Andre, who sounds just as brain dead, but is a good-looking man. He's he's Australian, isn't he, Peter Andre? Uh, I think so. Let's guess it. Let's just guess it's Australian. I'd say he's Australian. He's a good-looking man. I'd say Peter Andre, especially in his prime. Whoa. Mysterious girl, I want to get close to you. Oh my God! That's uh, how it went down in the jungle. What I will say is, put we def- your plastic body close to mine. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely do a barbershop kind of like setup. Where the three of us sing Mysterious Girl to Peter Andre whilst he's doing an Iceland delivery. Because I think that's his job now, doing Iceland deliveries. <laughs> Pays well. Good pension. Gets to see the kids more often. <clears throat> anyway. Sorry, sorry Peter. Say, what, sorry, when Katie. She, when she lets him out of the basement. <laughs> anyway. Katie Price is not Joseph Fritz. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I hit so just keep going I need to stop right <laughs> Lee Evans the greatest the greatest the greatest the greatest British comedian and I d- genuinely believe probably the greatest stand up comic and comic of, of any kind that's existed on this planet don't don't do it do it the reason why yes yeah, so I The reason why, ladies and gentlemen, that I believe in Lee Evans being one of the greatest comics is, one, he sold out motherfucking Wembley Arena. Oh, yeah. I was there. Good. Nice. Good. 
One thing I will say is it's obviously nowhere near as intimate as like a small comedy venue. Oh no, but probably, it's still great. Do, could you see him, yeah. or did, could you see? The, or you yeah, but we. I think uh, watching the screen. Uh, I went with um, Kale actually, who you work with. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. No, we paid extra to get the good tickets. Oh, cool. Good. But Wembley Arena, that so that seats what eighty, ninety thousand people. No, not arena, stadium, eighty, ninety thousand. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Wembley Arena, I think, is closer to like. Could you just Google what Wembley Arena? Um, I will say that he's one of the first comedians to do like stadium tours. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, he. D- I'm trying to think of his. his uh, what was it called? That tour It was like the Oxygen Tour or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> Wembley Capacity. Arena capacity. I'll do. Oh, twelve thousand five hundred. Yeah. Oh, Wembley you, Stadium's you, you ninety thousand. The, the sorry. stadium mixed up. What was, his, what was um? Could you just go on to his tour? So just type in um, Lee Evans tour. I'll do. Yeah. Oh. And you can't type, mate. It's a different keyboard to mine. Oh shit! I shouldn't. I should have specified what tour I was talking about. Like, yeah, go on Wikipedia. It'll be one of his most recent ones. <coughs> well, he's retired now. So yeah, he's, he's, he's totally. I'll tell you why he retired actually. Yeah, so he can spend time with his family. Roadrunner was that it? Uh, I, yeah, Roadrunner. Roadrunner was the one I went to see. So if you scroll down to, well, we can look at his revenue and tickets sold mm-hmm. as well. Just go down. So he maxed out the O2. Oh my god, he maxed out at eighty-eight thousand ticket sale. He the gross revenue from the O2. Is people seeing this at home? Sorry, Josh. Oh, we're not. Just bring that so, so they can see it. So the O2 in London. 88,037 tickets sold with a gross revenue of 4.119760 million. Absolutely insane. He then also sold out the Manchester Arena at 53,000 odd. And then the O2, whatever it's called, in Dublin, 17,000. So this guy, by himself... (laughs) <laughs> sold in just those three venues almost 160,000 tickets with a combined revenue of seven and a half mil. Can you also search it? Frankie Boyle's just out of curiosity. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see as well. Mm. Um, but th- Open this is a new tab, Josh. Yeah, new tab, mate. New tab. New tab. New tab! Because we want to keep that information, please. Du, 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 du. <laughs> <laughs> but when you look at um, when you look at Lee Evans' stand-up, it's a childish... It's almost like a it's like a fun style of stand up. It's totally different in terms of compared to Frankie Boyle's. Mm. His is much more about like being silly, being fun, being animated. Um, <laughs> I love how he's got. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> he's got an entire section about Harvey Price. Jesus, no, a, whole, a whole section about controversy. Yeah, well, he's a he's a controversial person. Yep. No, it doesn't give it doesn't have any oh, that's a bit of a shame that's nine uh, well anyway we can't do that anyway <laughs> I love the title of that one Hurt Like You've Never Been Loved Netflix Netflix exclusive so he's got his own uh, Netflix stuff <laughs> just that's reminded me of his, uh, his, his I think it was I think it was his opening joke on that one where it was like uh, <laughs> where someone tried to I think they tried to heckle him and he was just like don't because I'll abuse you so bad you'll think I'm a friend of the family Ooh, <laughs> I like it <laughs> Wow, I like his one of them. One of his tight, one of his tours was I would happily punch every one of you in the face. Yeah, <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. But Lee Evans, the greatest comedian. Just I'm just saying. First of all, on numbers. Now I'm going to move on to his actual comedy. I think on numbers he blasts Frankie Boyle out of the war. Just on that. So in terms of ticket sale, but then also. I mean, he had a small acting career. He was in the what was it called the Some, Amulet? Something with about Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah, that? yeah, and then there's something about Mary as something well. Something about Mary. Fifth um, Element. Fifth yeah, Element. Fifth Element. Yeah. Forgot about that. He was also Fifth Element was a good film, wasn't it? Mm. Um, he was also in Doctor Who as a reoccurring character. Nah, don't bring that up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's very true. The Medallion. That was it. The Medallion. Yeah. Uh, the Magic Roundabout. He was a voice for it. Interesting. But he's also been in stage productions, musicals, theatre, etc. Barking in Essex, I like it. Um, but when you think about it, I would say, I'd agree, that, well, sorry, I would say Lee Evans' 
comedy stand-up career is possibly the biggest it, it possible. Like, yeah, I, I'd probably, I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, he he was in his TV career. Well, I say TV and film because, well, actually, has Frankie Boyle been in any films? Not that I know of. Not that I know of either. I can't think of any. But there's just the TV ones. I think Frankie Boyle, obviously, he's been on a lot of panel shows, shit ton of panel shows. Mm. Channel 4, BBC. I don't know if he did any ITV ones, but he definitely did Channel 4 and BBC. I don't think he did any ITV. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think he did. Yeah, I don't know either. But I'll say, if he, imagine if Lee Evans had been on some of those panel shows. Do you think he would have been as good a performer as, Lee Ev- <coughs> as um, Frankie Boyle? No, I, I, I think... Like you say, Lee Evans' style is very much suited to the stage. It's I'm a one-man sure. show. Yeah, I'm I think not too so sure how show. he would have been performed in bouncing off group comedy. I yeah, think I don't know like how you do off the cuff stuff. Um, Couldn't tell you how he do that because mm. I think as a one-man band, he's the probably the best one-man band going yeah. of any comedians. I think him, Richard Pryor. And Seinfeld, that was who I was thinking of earlier, because Seinfeld was a fantastic, like, he was a, before he became the, before he did the sitcom, he's a fantastic stand-up. It's like um, Tim Allen was a fantastic co- uh, stand-up before he did Home Improvement. <laughs> but nowhere near to the it's same Fantastic level. cocaine dealer as well. What? Tim Allen. Tim Allen? C- cocaine dealer. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Fuck! Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Shit. Well, if anything falls through, at least he can go back onto yeah. something. Yeah. It's a good salesman of Coke. De Coca. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, I've I've never really seen many American comedians that I actually Richard thor- Pryor is thoroughly a, enjoy watching. He's a beast. I, 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 <laughs> before the controversy, like, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed one of Louis C.K.'s stand-ups. Um, I quite enjoyed Louis C.K. Yeah, he's a funny guy. It's just he's got <laughs> we a problem. We don't anymore. Um, he's a funny but, but man. Yeah, I don't it's know just what it is. There's not a lot of American comedians out there that I just I can really get on board with. I think you'd um, the some that I really enjoy. There's quite um, a few I've enjoyed, but just what's like my Netflix specials, but I can't really name. Them yeah, or it. just random like um, I've. I've I've seen a load of clips from like Kevin Hart stand up yeah. and some of it's really funny, but then you actually try and watch it all the way through and I'm like, have you seen uh, my... Aziz Ansari is actually really funny. Yep. Yeah. Have you seen Bill Burr? Bill Burr, yeah. Bill Burr. I've seen yeah, Bill Burr. Like Bill Burr, yeah. 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 He, he's that. funny. There is one that's stuck in my Joe head. Joe Rogan. I, I think he's dead now. Is it some... To do a podcast kind of thing. You got a Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> there, there was, there was a, 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 an American comedian. He's dead now, but I can't remember his name. Was it something Carson? Oh, sort yeah, of older looking guy mean. with a ponytail. Ryan, I want to say Bill. I want to say Bill no. as well. Bill Carson. Could you have a look for us, Josh? Just whilst we're talking about this. Um, but I've seen some of his stuff, and he was brilliant. I feel yeah, the crossover from uh, America to Britain is. I think it's yeah. quite difficult. Well, y- you see it. Um... Frank Carson. Oh no, it's uh... not him. No, sorry, it's not him. No. I'm thinking of someone different. He's from Belfast and performed a shit ton in, in Blackpool. You know who no, we I haven't it... mentioned? Like, I'd like to mention this person who's possibly another one of the the biggies. The biggies. Um, is, oh, you, know when you, just, you know when you just forget someone's fucking name when you're just about to say it? Blackpool comedian. Did... Um, Peter Kay, sorry. Bolton. Bolton. Yeah, <laughs> West West Coast, fuck it. I mean, one of his stand ups. One of his one was, was at Blackpool, Blackpool, that's what I was thinking. But <laughs> right, okay. Blackpool. One of the one of the greats a lot of people consider to be one of the greats is Peter Kay. Yeah. Um Yeah, I, I, I used to enjoy Peter Kay stuff. But obviously a he's lot. got a shit ton of fat like I think he's got family stuff going on, which is why he oh, didn't yeah. do his return tour. But T V series wise, fantastic. I mean, I did heavily consider Peter Kay as my choice. It's a fantastic Peter, comedian. I, He's see, a good comedian. See, that's His why bits I'd say were funny. P- Peter Kay's TV career, apart from Phoenix Nights and Max and Paddy to a certain Didn't extent, he do that? I um, thought were dreadful. What's that car one he did? Car share. I is it good? Because I, I didn't really I watch it I haven't probably seen Car Share, but he did that one where he dressed as a woman and that was awful. I can't remember what, it, what he called it. Is he the... Here's, here's something I'll say now. Is he... The English Eddie Murphy. No. That's, this is where that's I'll pose. Peter Kay. 
Ooh, because Eddie Murphy was funny back in the day. Back in the day, and he also he did some <clears throat> kind of good again, films again, where he played to- it was to- himself in different guys. To- totally different styles of comedy, though. Well, very I suppose, much. So. I suppose that's what we were touching on with you know the 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 dis- you know the the change between American humor and British humor. Because I see quite a lot of British comedians going over there because obviously James Corden's got a big show over there now and he tries to get the British stand-ups to go on and the Americans um, just I don't think they get our humour is it who's it who I said before earlier Jack, Jack James and, Oliver John Oliver John Oliver, John Oliver fucking yeah. hell I'll do well with the, poor yeah, old John see, Oliver yeah see they like John Oliver but I, I, a, as far as British you know comedians why? go I think he's terrible he used to be on compared to the he used to be on The Daily Show yeah, um, yeah with John Stewart and then he up, and then they? he went off on his own route but like he also used to be on Community yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, but he was only on for a few episodes, and I think they got kicked off because his character was crap, wasn't it? No. Yeah. Jimmy Carr well, do, apparently does well out in the US, so does Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais does amazing out in the US. Which is why Netflix because, picked up his special. Because he wrote the... Uh, obviously, he did the UK office, and then not a lot of American... And the films uh, he's been in. Yeah, and, but a lot, not a, a lot of Americans knew that he actually wrote the US office as well. But he's like, a very, it was all his brainchild. He's, a, he's very gifted. But oh, Ricky Gervais, very is very gifted. A fucking genius. I wouldn't say, but the Absolute thing is, genius. I wouldn't say he's as good as Mr. Lee Evans. I would. I I, I'd, say. I'd say there's there's a there is like a, a genius tier of British comedians, and then there's ones that are like absolutely brilliant, and then you've got like a midsection, and then just a. Shit section. I'd say that Lee Evans has sold us basically one of the greatest characters of all time which is just Lee Evans as a comedian. Because mm. Lee Evans, the normal Lee Evans, as in who, you know, wife and kids and that, is just a normal kind of awkward bloke. He, But then he has an entire... And this is the thing, like, he did one entire... I remember <coughs> he did an, an entire... It's either a bit or an entire... Set. Set, where he didn't talk. And I, try, I can't remember the fucking name of it. It pisses me off. But it's literally... It's a, it's like a joke where it's like a voice. It's a, he puts on like a record and it starts playing and it tells you to how oh, to be the perfect stand up. Oh, right. oh yes, oh, yes, yeah, it's, such it's, it's, a good yeah, routine. It's the beginning of um, I can't remember such which one, but it's routine. one of his early, earlier. DVD yeah, really early, really tours early. That he, did. he opens the, the box yeah. and he's getting stuff out and there's the sound effects and he's doing that. And what that shows he's, to me, he's done that one. He's also done the drumming one. Yep, yeah, he's done yeah. the drumming one. But the thing is that Lee Evans, he has the amazing jokes. He has the physical comedy, which I think is the rarest, one of the mm. rarest ones. But he's got physical comedy that's actually fucking funny. Yeah. And musical comedy, as in the Bohemian Rhapsody bit that he did, that's actually fucking funny. Saw it live. <laughs> Jammy cunt. <laughs> but he's, I mean, the thing is, that he could, he, whatever style of comedy he did, it was funny. Yeah. It, he, he was like, he could do all of them and they were all brilliant. I don't think anyone could criticise the Bohemian Rhapsody one. I don't think anyone could criticise the the how to be a comedian one. And I don't think anyone can really criticise some of his best jokes. I don't think that... I think No, not really. Because he's, he's got the element of... He holds the... Like, you know where, obviously, Frankie Boy swears a lot. And we'll get on to... I think this is a good topic because... Lee Evans swears a lot as well. But so Lee Evans swears but he d- in a different way. He doesn't string them out and out. He doesn't string them out and in like a long one. He picks where he slots them in. So he'll make an entire joke, doesn't swear, and then at the end will then swear. So that it gives it more no, emphasis I dis- on I it. I disagree with that. I, that's but so there's it, one where he goes that's, like... I, uh, that's one of uh, a few complaints, uh, uh, complaints that a lot of people had about modern day British comedy is that it's just constant swearing. And Lee Evans was included in that because he, he, he does swear. He swears a swear, lot, in his but he shows. doesn't. He doesn't go like it's not the same. I say it's not the same as Frankie Boyle when he swears. So if you watch it's, it, if you so do it's, this, it's about the stand-up the same. set. So not. I'm not talking about like when he was doing the TV because obviously he couldn't swear. But like when it's the stand-up sets, I think that they they both use swearing very well, but in different ways. So Frankie Boyle's was all about chain chaining them together, like you fucking cunt and stuff like that, and chaining. The, insults and swear words together and mix them together whilst when Lee Evans was doing it it's more like he's talking about something that's happened to him it's like he's doing observational comedy yes yeah, yeah yeah so he's talking about like something's happened in his life and he went and he went, oh, wish I'd told him to fuck off or something like that like that's what how he'd do it he'd use the swear word in his observation of what he thinks he should have done for a, but for a comedic purposes whilst Frankie Boyle uses it more liberally I'd say in all of parts of his comedy. So even when he does like a, like when he poses like a, a silly circumstance or something like that, 
and he'd make a joke out of it and he'd swear in that. He uses it differently, but I think they're both... I sort, kind of, I sort of see what you mean. Do you, it's sort kind of, of yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. explain because it's, it's quite a niche thing. <coughs> and I think the swearing needs to be addressed because yeah. a lot of people, as you said, a lot of people had criticism of modern British comedy. There's a lot of swearing. Yeah. But one Which of I the, don't get. One of the biggest... It's, it's a word. Get one over it. One of the it. best oldest Sorry, comedians. Get the fuck over it. One of the best <laughs> old comedians. Do you, do you remember Bob Monkhouse? Yeah. So Bob Monkhouse used to do a blue set of comedy. So he'd do his early show, which was like from five till seven. And then after that, he'd do his blue, like, late night show. And he used to swear there so much. And he used to say, like, the most vile things. But Bob Monkhouse, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we know Bob Monkhouse. He's nice. He's cheery. He's a family was character. It, was it Bob Monkhouse who did um, Bullseye? No, it was another show he did, I think. Can we bring up Bob Monkhouse, please? <laughs> Rest in peace, poor old Bob Monkhouse. Um, but he was a fantastic the guy, the guy who did Bullseye died recently, didn't he? I think they're all they're all dying. Yeah, comedian. No, yeah, I'm I'm thinking, yeah. He had an OBE. Fuck <coughs> me. So a uh, presenter and game show host. God, we, what was can his we see who, his? Um, who, what, can we it see wasn't. His it wasn't him who did Bullseye. I'm just trying to fucking remember. Thank you, Golden Shot Celebrity Family Fortunes. Remember, he he did all of that stuff, but then his actual comedy shows. Stand-up comedy. Could we just go to that, please? Up. Up. Up, 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 up. Oh. Up. Keep going. No, it was up. Keep going up. Be... Keep going up, please. I'll keep going. Fuck off, Simon. <laughs> keep going up. I say, I'm saying please, mate. Stand-up comedy. <laughs> Flipping heck. <laughs> well. He had an appearance on Have I Got News For You. Interesting. Um... God, he was still going till 2003. Christ. But Bob Monkhouse was, he, he was a, a lot of people were like, oh, he's a nice family man. But then he was proper savage. So that was back, and he used to do it back in, the, I think, the 70s and the 80s. He used to do that stuff, especially when he got into um, into his full sort of popularity. But for me, the only criticism I've got of Lee Evans is he didn't really transcend the TV world. Frankie Boyle obviously dominated the TV mm. world. He had a good, and he had a good. I'd say he had a. I'd say Lee Evans is top tier when it comes to the comedy circuit because he sold out so many tickets. Like I'm just talking on pure numbers. Frankie Boyle had a good run of the of the, his stand up tours, but Ad. well, still is going. he still going? Because yeah. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen any of his things as still recently. Going. I saw him the other. I end. think he's sca- he must have scaled it back a little bit. He must have scaled back no. some of his stuff. I just, I yeah, suppose I'm not seeing him as much huh? as I used to. He said he was retiring from stand up, and then obviously he ended up doing the Netflix special. Well, right. But I don't that's think all he should do. Since. I think he should just do Amazon specials, and I think he should just do Netflix specials. Yeah, I saw him a couple of years ago. He did, York Barbican. He had one. I know he did <laughs> something in 2017 because it was on his um, Wikipedia page earlier. Mm. So he did have. He's, he's done. I think it was Prometheus or something like that. I think he was right. doing that, yeah. but. I don't know. I mean, obviously, Lee Evans is totally gone now. But the reason why Lee Evans is gone is actually, it's a really interesting one, is that it's because his old manager, his original manager, died. And their whole aim was to get to Wembley. So yeah. the whole thing was, we're going to get, I can't, can't remember his, um, Lee Evans' manager. can't remember his name, unfortunately. But they would say to each other, oh, the, you know, the, the manager before Lee Evans went out for every gig went, this is your Wembley, Lee. This is your Wembley. And he'd go out and he'd smash it. And then then I remember when they actually, well, I wasn't there. When he actually did Wembley, he was like, this is your Wembley to him. And he, and he went back to him. He went, no, mate, this is Wembley. Yeah. This is Wembley. We're, we're, we've sold out Wembley. Um, and then that guy died and basically he was just like, there's no point in me continuing to do this. He'd made, enough, he'd made when you look at it, he made £7 million. Mm, yeah. Back in the day when, you know, big... And that was just on ticket sales. Just on ticket sales. <laughs> not on, like, sponsorship, not on um, TV, DVD, flipping hour specials, merchandise, not on his film roles. Other stuff that he's done, you know, Screenwriting. Yeah, screen, screen roles, writing, um, acting. He probably has re- been doing a shit ton of joke writing for other people as well. Yeah, he's probably, probably kept the short, the sword fairly sharp. Yeah. If he did come back, probably one of the best comebacks of of a stand-up com- com- oh, yeah. comedian ever. Oh, yeah. 
He's not like a he's not like a a Michael McIntyre who's continuously doing he's continuously in the spotlight. But I'd never say that Michael McIntyre would get to like the level of a Lee Evans. No. Because Lee Evans is was so such a powerhouse. And you could you could say that could be like his PR agents or it could be his managers, it could be a, a plethora of different things added together to make it. But what really set him apart from everybody else was his combination of different styles of comedy that was relatable to the everyday public. It wasn't all about being... And this isn't a slight against Frankie Boar, because I actually I really enjoy Frankie Boar's comedy, but it's not all about being a, a, an angry man. Because that's the criticism that I would say is a main one of Frankie Boyle. Of, he's not really there to make you feel happy. He's there to express your inner anger of everyday life and the comedic elements of it. Was Lee Probably Evans, why I like him so much. <laughs> was Lee Evans... His life is shit. <laughs> is much more about... He makes... He's there to make you happy. He's like there saying, to make no, you it's very, laugh. Lee Evans was very observational, uh, comedy-based. So it was very much uh, relatable... Uh, relatable stories that he would tell and put that comedic spin on. Um, and that's why he was garnered so much popul- popularity, really, because everyone would go, oh, ha, yeah, no, we literally, that happened to us the other day. Yeah. It's brilliant. And, yeah. The ones about his wife is, like, telling him off for stuff, or mm-hmm. make it like, um, when he's telling a story, and he's building himself up and building himself up, and then he's, like, tells the, the punchline, and he's like, yeah, look at me, I'm really, yeah, yeah. 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 And then his wife goes, no, he fucking did it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I had Charles for West Ham. No, he didn't. Then she goes, no, he fucking didn't. (laughs) And he immediately... Here's an interesting one for you. What's your favourite Lee Evans joke and what's your favourite Frankie Ball joke? The monkey boy one's always my favourite. What, for... um for Lee, Lee Evans, Evans yeah. whenever he, whenever he mentions Monkey yeah. Boy, yeah, right. like the but the, there's one he does at the at the actual O2 where he he talks about how like come here Monkey Boy and the wife gets the bow and arrow, yeah, and, <laughs> um, and then he goes like that and he sticks it on his head. That's fant- That's quite funny because it's a mix of the yeah. He's taken the piss out of himself, and I, then he's taken the piss. And then the, he's t- the monkey boy one that I liked was when he was on about spiders, and when you go into the garden shed, and and you get all the webs over you, and this is just you see the spider in the corner going, "Oh, I'm gonna get you, monkey boy." <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Boyle's fav, my favorite one. Oh man, it's got to be the Katie Price show. No, 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 no. That's it's not. That's, that's not, not my the, favorite that's Frankie Boyle joke either. Oh. I have, it's I have a mock the weak one. It is I, a mock I have week two one. favorite Frankie Ball jokes. Is it the one? Was it the one about Madeline McCann? Which one was that? Oh, I'm trying to remember it because obviously we can't bring <laughs> which, it up. Which which Madeline McCann joke did Frankie Boyle oh, tell? Because it's probably loads of them. It was them. quite it was quite sharp. We can't we can't really bring up his joke unfortunately. It'll be in the controversy section. It probably will. Yeah. Um, down 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 down. down, 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 down. Please, Josh. You're terrible at scrolling. You, you see me scrolling. Oh, Rebecca there, Addington. Uh, Harvey Price. There's a lot on Harvey Price, isn't there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's an fine. entire law case. But yeah. Give us your one, mate, because it, it might be one out, of mine. I'm pretty sure. It might be one of mine. No, uh, no, he lost it. Did he? Yeah, he got fucked. Fuck. <clears throat> Um, anyway. My two favourite Frankie Ball jokes. They were both actually on Mot the Week. Um, and it was the one... The, the first one that was on there was the Queen. <clears throat> when it was the uh, things you want here at the Queen's Christmas speech. Do you remember that one? Keep going. He said... Um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> He's obviously that. It's obviously that funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we found it. Yeah. I am now so old that my pussy is haunted. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, that was quite funny. And then the other one was there. Uh, it was <laughs> on the was quite good. Mock of the Week, Too Hot for TV, and they were on about the um, uh, speeding campaign. And he said he thinks the uh, the anti-speeding campaign should just be footage of Richard Hammond trying to remember his own <laughs> wedding day. <laughs> that was the one. Yeah. That was the one. That was the joke. That was, that was the one. Do you know why? It's because one of the effect that you saw on the other people, because you saw Dara O'Brien go from just kind of normally kind of like... He recoiled, he went, didn't he? Like yeah. And you saw him go, like, actually, there was a physical I pain. Like how the, the joke progressed a bit further, and then Frankie Boyle said something, and it was sort of like him taking the moral high ground, and Dara was just like, you're trying to take the moral <laughs> high ground here. Um... I think, yeah, his... But 
my favorite Lee Evans joke, weirdly, it's 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 not I don't even think it's like a big, big joke of of Lee Evans. Probably not a lot of people would remember it, but it's the bit where he's he's um I think it was his stand up in Scotland and he says that he got to the town and someone came up and they went, get off me <laughs> and then it was like could you tell me where the station is all in that bit? And he goes, and I said, yes, officer, if you go down there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why that, that one always just oh, had me in stitches. I loved it. I, I liked the, uh, the one where he's on about like oh, toilets in airplanes. And, <laughs> and when you accidentally hit the flush button, when you're on Do it. Smash planes in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, parcel force. <laughs> we will get that package to you. <laughs> I love yeah. Lee Evans is a Jordan, I make that joke Please a lot help us No <laughs> I love that man so much He's an interesting he is, he, he's, I, I, he is an absolute genius He's the best uh, wait, Where is he from? Is he from Is it just outside of Manchester I, I can't remember I can't remember no, where can't he, remember exactly he's from, not from Lee Evans I can't remember just, Let's just find out where Lee Evans is from He'll probably be on his Wikipedia page again. <clears throat> Bristol. 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 Oh, interesting. All right, my lover. Interesting. <clears throat> but he's a... Lee. His full name is Lee John Martin Evans, and he was born in 1964. Wow. He's 54 years old. Damn. God, I love that man. Fantastic. <laughs> He's a fantastic, uh, just a, in pure... Table rising a few inches? <laughs> in a pure c- comedy sense, he's just pff, an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, he was powerhouse. an absolute... It's, it's, I'd say yeah. Frankie Boyle is a powerhouse. I wouldn't say he's the powerhouse. I'd say Lee Evans, Richard Pryor, Seinfeld. No, I'd probably say, at, at, at the moment, still working, the powerhouse at Kevin the moment. Hart. Pardon? Be Kevin Hart. Still no. working as Kevin Hart. No, Jimmy Carr. Ooh, good point. Jimmy, we got that point. fucker's everywhere. Uh, I don't mean he should be because he's, he's, he's not genius. He's not but... transcended film yet. <clears throat> I'd say Ricky Gervais is more of a powerhouse. Mm, yeah, no, that's, that's a good I'd point. I'd say it's a good point. On the working I right think now, pure, purely stand up. If we had to say working right now of who's killing the game, as in who's doing the best in terms of being the best comedian across all platforms right now, it is Kevin Hart. I'd say up there next to him they, is Ricky nah, Gervais. No, because I don't think his stand-up game's that strong. <clears throat> he's selling out arenas, though. Huh? He's selling out arenas. And yeah, stadiums. no, but I, no, he's yeah, entire, he might be selling out. He's but, got an entire clothing line for him. But all I about mean, him. I mean, is, is his, his actual stand-up material oh, I'm not, isn't oh, yeah, as, so I'm not, as strong? I'm not the biggest Kevin Hart fan, but what mm. I will say is, when you're in the film, when you're in films of like The Rock, yeah. Him and The Rock have had like two or three films together where they've just yeah. they've been a perfect pairing. They're, just, <laughs> they're yeah. perfect pairing them two. Um, but then he's also done TV. He's also done an insane amount of work, and he's selling out arenas and flipping stadiums and shit like that. I'd say he's up there. Ricky Gervais is up there in terms of just the amount of work. Yeah, I, I also love how he said that his kids aren't getting anything. His kids aren't getting what, any. What Ricky of Gervais? It. Yeah, Ricky. Don't have kids. Oh no, he doesn't. Sorry. Oh, I got confused with Gordon Ramsay. Sorry. <laughs> oh well. I mean, it's very easy to angry to, British people and then mistake fucker. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, sorry. Back and Ricky Gervais. <laughs> I got so confused then. I'm sorry. Oh, Gordon Ramsay is a fucking genius. Oh yeah. He's you hilarious. know, he's he said if his kids could beat his time at the London Marathon, they'd give him like twenty grand or something ridiculous. <laughs> and I would, I would have ran my fucking tits off. I would have, I'd have just chopped him down. <laughs> no, no. So you didn't. Beat me now, old man. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I would have been on that. I would have done the, you know, the entire um, scene from Rocky Four of Ivan Drago training. That would have been me in the build-up. I would have cream. I would have obliterated him in that marathon, and then I would have taken that twenty thousand pounds, and I would have just spent it on shit chefs cooking stuff for me every day in front of my dad just to really stick the knife in that I'm not getting any inheritance what just like hiring a Weatherspoon chef yeah just get house. my mate my mate Cheesy shout out to Cheesy um, who works as a Weatherspoon's chef or as I like to call it microwave technician <clears throat> uh, just to warm up food that just doesn't look palatable there's an, om- there's an omelette there it's grey fuck it bang it in the microwave right Gordon what do you think of this does it annoy you does it get under your skin is it not as good as you would do Om nom nom, you cunt. 
Also, I didn't realise he had a full professional football career. Yeah. But then he got injured and yeah, couldn't yeah, do yeah. it. And then he had to go... Then he, then he went, you know what? I'll take my skills of being a professional, ex-professional footballer for, was it Rangers or something uh, like Yes, that? Rangers. Rangers is the goalie. Did you play for Rangers and Celtic? I can't remember. I can't remember. Ooh, you wouldn't want to do that, would you? Rangers then He's Celtic. Like, yeah, he was one of those weird ones. Anyway, I wouldn't... And then he went, I'll take those applicable skills at stopping balls from going into nets. Take that to cooking. Yeah, yeah. I'll be an amazing... I'll be one of the best chefs in Britain and open my entire chain of own... of own... of my own shit. What the fuck? In, strange character. And I'll also judge people's hotels. And, yeah. Hotels, businesses, everything. And then make... and then shout at people for not being able to cook as well as he can. So I think uh, we'll round up this uh, debate and we'll get Josh's opinion, I think, of who he thinks is the best comedian, just at, c- c- separate to ours, and maybe we'll even get his opinion of the two. I mean, I've not got it down to one comedian, if I'm honest. Okay. Pick loads. Just give us oh, a couple. Give us a couple. Don't go, don't go like five, because that's way too many. So there's three Okay. But- I've really thought about two of which w- have already been mentioned. Uh, Jimmy Carr, yeah, as one of them. Mm-hmm. I saw him at York Barbican last year. Yeah, just yeah, just yeah, just yeah. It was like his uh, greatest hits tour, so mm-hmm. it was all the classic jokes. Not not any I can think of right now. It's hard. I think it's hard sometimes. Yeah. And when you think about it, Jimmy Carr's jokes, a lot of them have been written by Frankie Boyle. Cool. Yeah. Next um, one, Peter Kay. Peter Kay. Just because that that uh, garlic bread joke is still used at my workplace yep. to this day. It's a fantastic joke. I say it sometimes in the house when I'm by myself, drunk. And the uh, mis misheard song lyrics. Yes. The hot dogs yeah. go on. One of, one of <laughs> my favourite ones. Vicar. It's raining. Oh, it's raining. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get everybody in. Everybody it's in. It's spitting. It's spitting. It's spitting. It's spitting. <laughs> Machine gun one as well is a good one. Ha 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 That's fantastic as well. Also not part of his stand up, but uh just pretty much any joke on Phoenix Nights, especially the uh car alarm. Get back, you bastards! I'll break your legs. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, Last one. It's Jerry the Berry! Perry! <laughs> burn baby burn. Disco inferno. <laughs> <laughs> it's so northern it hurt. That's how. That's what he was like. And what's your last one, Josh? I'd say uh, John Richardson. Yes. John Richardson. I don't know much about F- him. Funny, funny story. Okay. Shout out to my missus here. Um, when Is this the one with the foot too bigger than the other and walks in a circle? Yes. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, she, when we went out on our first date, um, she decided that she wanted to go on a second date with me because she mm. pretty much thought that she was dating Ron, uh, John Richardson. Because she thought I was exactly like John Richardson, both in looks and humour. And stature. So, thank you, John Richardson, for being the pussy magnet that you are. <laughs> I don't know who John Never Richardson is. Never thought I'd hear that. You don't know who John really Richardson is. I really don't know who John does, Richardson does, um, is. Eight out of ten cats does countdown. Uh, it was a uh, regular and eight, the, the one of the team leaders in eight out of ten cats. Just uh, Google John Richardson. Could you quickly bring just bring him up? Because I probably he, remember him. He is him. a fucking funny guy. It's interesting. So would I lie to you? See, that, I, see that's would why I, I just wanted to, because oh. I am such a big fan of British comedy. Yes, right, I'm with yeah. you now. I wanted to give a shout out to loads of British comedians in this episode so I'm going for it now we got John Richardson we got Sean Locke Sean Locke's a fantastic funny funny fucking yeah. gangster yeah. Um, Rob Beckett mm-hmm. uh, Gary Delaney no I hate that guy I enjoy do you know where I saw Gary Delaney first time ever was it download 2012 I should probably reiterate I'm sure he's a very nice gentleman but his humour proper cringes me out it's, like, it's designed it's, to that's what he does no no that's no but style. I mean no because I, I what one liners cr- cr- I, I like Ricky Gervais for fuck's sake mm. Ricky Gervais is one of my favourite stand up comedians of all time yeah. Joe Lyser he's a funny fucker um, Catherine Ryan Catherine Ryan is brilliant now what I will say I is Catherine that. Ryan she's just she, come up out of nowhere she, she is a fantastic whoever is her agent should pat themselves on the back yeah. and just because she is a fantastic Fantastic um, comedian, Ashlyn, Ashlyn, or uh, yeah, Ashlyn B. Here's another Northern one. Northern Irish a people, lass, a lot of people, sleep hilarious. On. A lot of people sleep on. Uh, not, not that way. Just, uh, fucking hell! I didn't even. I made my own joke and didn't even think about it, the consequences. Um, do you remember Shappy Corisandi? Yes, 
seen her live. I re- Which when one she was first she? did, she did the live at the Apollo. Oh and yes, she yeah, fantastic. she was quite funny. Yeah. Sarah Pascoe she is another one. Her, she, she got a divorce, unfortunately, um, and she tweeted about her entire ordeal of her getting divorced and having to figure out what the fuck to do with having a young kid. It was hilarious. Just that the the dilemma she got herself into and having to think about like, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? It was she, and also when she cracks jokes, every everyone laughs at like about it like oh you know it's got divorced it's not like you know he's he's you know graded for a younger model or anything and like little things like just little snipes little digs Ooh. little digs little digs that probably are absolute bullshit because i mean comedians make up entire fake stories like um i've not heard about her doing anything recently um she's doing i think she's doing a lot of stuff for like the guardian mm-hmm. like newspaper ah, okay. stuff she's doing columns and stuff mm-hmm. but one i i think people Lee need, Mack. Lee Mack, Lee Mack is a yeah. bril- his stand-up set, he his first great. stand-up stand-up one, the, the Franz Apollo, Ferdinand Apollo. joke. No, 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 no. Uh, when he did his own oh, hour, right, okay. his Franz Ferdinand one was was good. I thought that was yeah. quite funny because I was a Franz, Fer- Franz Ferdinand fan, I, I loved and I thought it was funny Lee, as fuck. Lee, uh, Take me out. I love the joke about um, where, where you borrow someone's glasses. Fucking hell, are you all well, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a brilliant one. That and, sets good. And the one where he's on about the um, the Americans coming over to Britain and he's just like, oh, I feel sorry for these American ladies coming over who think we're all like Hugh, um, Hugh Grant, just going, and then you just get a couple of Geordies coming up going, yeah, yeah, I'll buy you a vodka, but one of us, you'd best be up for a fuck. <laughs> that's correct. That is correct. That's how, that's how people from uh, Geordie land oh, speak. how South African is just playing a record player backwards. <laughs> mm, you're at my town again. <laughs> to the <laughs> I see, and also obviously I just butchered Lee Max jokes there but yes yeah, well. <laughs> the last the last one I'll say and a lot of people um, sleep on is Jeremy Vine's brother Rob Vine I think it is oh yeah yeah is it Rob yeah, Vine yeah. could you just quickly check that because he's, actually a lot when you of... when he when you talk about a one liner are you on about Tim Vine? Tim Vine, Tim, fuck Tim, me. Yeah. Sorry. He was also not going out with yeah. Lee Evans. His, one, his one-liners are the best one-liners. Because all his, all his routine is, he just does one-liners. Mm-hmm. Which may... Yeah. There might be some that tie back in. And he goes kind of like that and backs t- ties in previous jokes back into it. But every single one, it's like it's just one punch. Yeah. Whilst yeah. instead of other ones, you like chain punches together... And it's all nice and fluid, and you kind of have a nice story being told. He's just there going, bang, straight yeah. in the face, bang with a punch. And last one who, his stand-up is surprisingly brilliant, um, who has also conquered TV, Jack Whitehall. Yeah. Jack, yeah. White, Jack Whitehall is an absolute Ooh. genius of comedy. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respect your opinion. And I'm going to say it's I do not agree whatsoever because I do not like Jack. Well, that Jack would Warren be an Hall. interesting debate, wouldn't it? I do not. I, <laughs> I really think you'd lose that one, Simon. <laughs> really, really do not get on with that man. Why? I just, it's a, but this isn't. It's not a. It's not me hating on his career. It's just I have a personal thing about him. I don't know why. I just do not like him. You'd, so, that's why you just have no. You just an irrational. A rational hatred. hatred for him. Yeah, that's it. It's like. You have an irrational hatred for peanuts. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm just taking the piss. I'm just taking the piss of that. Cashews. You still no. You still are you what nuts aren't you allergic to? These nuts? What <laughs> 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 I'll be honest. Those not, nuts? <laughs> I, I'm not listening to the podcast anymore. I'm just looking at Tim Vines. One-liners. His one-liners are fantastic. Can you just give us one? Just, just, just give him one. Give I him saw, one. I saw this bloke chatting up a cheater, and I thought he's trying to pull a fast one. <laughs> sake. Oh, I forgot to mention John Bishop as well. Yeah, yeah. Great I haven't comedian. seen much from him so, recently. So many. Is he, he's got a new is he, Netflix one out. Is he ill? Or yeah. am I? Uh, or yeah. am I? Or is some Greg, family Greg member? Greg Davis as well. Yeah. God, we've, we've missed out so many. Greg Davis, by the way, they might be doing a spin-off with him doing the character from In Betweeners. There's yes, talks about they're, they're also in, apparently oh, they're also apparently right in series four of the Inbetweeners. Good. Mm. I mean, all power to them. They, had, I think, they got I think a movie it was, out of that shit. So I think don't... it was they got two. Oh yes, it did get two. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. You want about the um... Jay Buckley sharing that? Yeah, I feel he like that was up... a piss take. If I'm honest, 
He turned up. Um, he was in. I can dream. He I went to Bellu. Hey, he yeah, just he turned did, up yeah. randomly. It was yeah. like Bellu was like, what the fuck's this? Yeah, because uh, I think it was David Hayes, one of David Hayes' agents or something, supposedly looked like Simon from the Inbetweeners. Uh, Not Simon. Yeah. Simon Bird, who yeah, plays yeah. Will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they went, they gave him a briefcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that's good. Right. So yes, let's round this podcast up. So, Josh. <clears throat> Who do you think is the best out of the two options we've given? Did you give your third option? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Peter K. We had him uh, up. Peter K. John. John, John Richardson, John that was Richardson it. Yeah, yeah. That's my third one. Yeah. And Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr, cool. Um, I would have to say Lee Evans. Yes! I'm honest. Fair? Fucking Lee Evans, get in there. I'm so far ahead at this point, I don't even mind taking a loss because Lee Evans is a genius. That's what losers say. Did they, Simon? Yeah, that's what losers say. I mean... I'm scrapping... I mean, come on, we're going to be doing this podcast for a long time. You could pull out a fucking 10 and lead and I'd, I'd eventually hunt you the fuck down because I'm that committed to it. Would you, though? Would you? I would. To be honest, though, most of my wins have, have, have come from, like, the film and television stuff because that's, like, my area down to a T. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> whilst we're wrapping this podcast up, you might as well go over to Sam's uh, film and television channel, Radioactive Screen. We'll put some card in somewhere up here. Yes, we'll have a link to the YouTube channel on our, on this YouTube video that comes up, if that makes sense. Yes. That was terrible from we'll me. have a link in the, the description below. Yes, thank that's, you very that's much, That's what Josh. I was trying to say. Josh knows what he's doing. <laughs> and we'll have a card up top for one of the videos. Yeah, yeah. there we go. That's good. Woo-hoo! So I don't know which video yet, but... Yeah, we'll put, put some put some price one make, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ladies and gentlemen this has been podcast number 38 who is the best forward slash greatest British comedian is it <laughs> Frankie Royal I forgot <laughs> what I said then <laughs> or is it Mr. Lee Evans you can find us and well you can tell us what you think on our Facebook poll and Twitter poll. So go on to Facebook, The Gentleman's Debate Podcast. Go on to our Twitter, which is at TGD underscore podcast. Our Instagram is The Gentleman's Debate. And also, if you're on whatever preferred podcasting platform, make sure you subscribe and leave us a review of what you thought of the podcast. And finally, make sure when you're watching this on YouTube, yes, we're on YouTube, you can go and subscribe to the Gentleman's Debate Podcast. That's our channel. Make sure that you subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't, and also share it with your friends. I mean, don't dislike it. But I mean, any interaction is always good. And also visit your video product code at UK and hire Josh. Yes, thank you very much. See you later, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Right.